Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the pre-show of our 75th annual general meeting. The official business of the meeting will begin at 6 p.m., so please stay with us as I go through some of the housekeeping items for tonight's meeting. If by any chance you get logged off this webcast, please go to www.fancity.com slash AGM. Once you're there, under Annual General Meeting, click on AGM Remote Viewing and Voting for more information on how to re-log on to the webcast using the web browser. If you haven't already done so, you can find the package for tonight's meeting on www.fancity.com slash AGM. In the package, you will find the agenda and standing rules, the minutes from our 2020 AGM, the proposed ordinary resolutions that will be presented, as well as links to Van City's rules and 2020 annual report. Don't forget, we're also giving you a chance to win one of two $500 visas through a prize draw. Note that you must be logged in as a member for the full webcast to be entered in the draw. We will contact you directly if you're one of the lucky winners in the days after tonight's meeting. Also, stay tuned until the end for a special code for a discount to a local Van City member business through our Support Local BC campaign. If you have any questions or comments about tonight's meeting, please send them to agm at vancity.com. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us virtually, and we hope you enjoyed the presentation. In the meantime, please stay with us, and we will begin shortly. When we're open to change, magic happens. People all around open their hearts to help in unexpected ways. And new doors suddenly open. At Van City, we're proud to be bringing small businesses the solutions and support they need to stay open. Because being open is a wonderful thing. See how we can help your small business at vancity.com slash open. We work with Van City because our values are so well aligned and we strive to be part of the community just like Van City does. Van City is first and foremost here to foster small businesses in their community and make a greater impact on the Vancouver community. You know, we're working hard to be sustainable and provide in the community at a high level, just like Van City does. They have been cheerleaders to our business. They deliver on their promises, and they're there for me when I need them. I really can feel like how closed and shut the city is just by how many things are boarded up. Like, are we ever gonna be able to take these boards down? Throw a fire on top of a pandemic, like how do you make it through that? You know, is that place ever gonna reopen? The Ellis Building is a steel manufacturing building that's been here since the turn of the century. Uh, we've converted it into a co-working space for small business owners and creatives. It's a hub for our community where we can hold creative workshops, see our clients, and distribute our goods and services. Due to COVID-19, the doors to the Ellis Building were shut. After we shut our doors, we were victims of arson, which added another layer of difficulty on top of the issues that we were already navigating around COVID. The neighborhood was starting to shut down and get boarded up, and it just felt like a very dark and closed off space. Van City's support of this mural was, was really a nice unexpected bonus and like something we knew we had to do but with no resources of our own having a bank step up and be like hey let us let us make this into something as small business owners it's important to us to work with a financial institution like van city whose community values align with our own having Paige come in and be able to put her touch on it was really amazing it's like really brought some light and life back into something that really felt so negative for a while. Everybody here is incredibly creative and resilient and we're on the mend and working to renovate and bring the space back to really better than it was when we started. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the pre-show of our 75th annual general meeting. The official business of the meeting will begin at 6 p.m., so please stay with us as I go through some of the housekeeping items for tonight's meeting. If by any chance you get logged off this webcast, please go to www.fancity.com AGM. 
Once you're there, under Annual General Meeting, click on AGM Remote Viewing and Voting for more information on how to re-log on to the webcast using the web browser. If you haven't already done so, you can find the package for tonight's meeting on www.bandcity.com AGM. In the package, you will find the agenda and standing rules, the minutes from our 2020 AGM, the proposed ordinary resolutions that will be presented, as well as links to Van City's rules and 2020 annual report. Don't forget, we're also giving you a chance to win one of two $500 visas through a prize draw. Note that you must be logged in as a member for the full webcast to be entered in the draw. We will contact you directly if you're one of the lucky winners in the days after tonight's meeting. Also, stay tuned until the end for a special code for a discount to a local Van City member business through our Support Local BC campaign. If you have any questions or comments about tonight's meeting, please send them to agm at vancity.com. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us virtually, and we hope you enjoy the presentation. In the meantime, please stay with us, and we will begin shortly. When we're open to change, magic happens. People all around open their hearts to help unexpected ways and new doors suddenly open at van city we're proud to be bringing small businesses the solutions and support they need to stay open because being open is a wonderful thing see how we can help your small business at vancity.com open We work with Van City because our values are so well aligned and we strive to be part of the community just like Van City does. Van City is first and foremost here to foster small businesses in their community and make a greater impact on the Vancouver community. You know, we're working hard to be sustainable and provide in the community at a high level just like Van City does. They have been cheerleaders to our business. They deliver on their promises and they're there for me when I need them. I really can see like how closed and shut the city is just by how many things are boarded up. Like, are we ever gonna be able to take these boards down? Throw a fire on top of a pandemic, like how do you make it through that? You know, is that place ever gonna reopen? The Ellis Building is a steel manufacturing building that's been here since the turn of the century. Uh, we've converted it into a co-working space for small business owners and creatives. It's a hub for our community where we can hold creative workshops, see our clients, and distribute our goods and services. Due to COVID-19, the doors to the Ellis Building were shut. After we shut our doors, we were victims of arson, which added another layer of difficulty on top of the issues that we were already navigating around COVID. The neighborhood was starting to shut down and get boarded up, and it just felt like a very dark and closed off space. Van City's support of this mural was, was really a nice, unexpected bonus and like something we knew we had to do, but with no resources of our own, having a bank step up and be like, hey, let us, let us make this into something. As small business owners, it's important to us to work with a financial institution like Van City, whose community values align with our own. Having Paige come in and be able to put her touch on it was really amazing. It's like really brought some light and life back into something that really felt so negative for a while. Everybody here is incredibly creative and resilient and we're on the mend and working to renovate and bring the space back to really better than it was when we started. Good evening everyone and welcome to the pre-show of our 75th annual general meeting. The official business of the meeting will begin at 6 p.m. so please stay with us as I go through some of the housekeeping items for tonight's meeting. If by any chance you get logged off this webcast, please go to www.vancity.com AGM. Once you're there, under annual general meeting, click on AGM remote viewing and voting for more information on how to re-log on to the webcast using the web browser. If you haven't already done so, you can find the package for tonight's meeting on www.vancity.com AGM. In the package, you will find the agenda and standing rules, 
the minutes from our 2020 AGM, the proposed ordinary resolutions that will be presented, as well as links to Van City's rules and 2020 annual report. Don't forget, we're also giving you a chance to win one of two $500 visas through a prize draw. Note that you must be logged in as a member for the full webcast to be entered in the draw. We will contact you directly if you're one of the lucky winners in the days after tonight's meeting. Also, stay tuned until the end for a special code for a discount to a local Van City member business through our Support Local BC campaign. If you have any questions or comments about tonight's meeting, please send them to agm at vancity.com. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us virtually, and we hope you enjoy the presentation. In the meantime, please stay with us, and we will begin shortly. When we're open to change, magic happens. People all around open their hearts to help in unexpected ways. And new doors suddenly open. At Van City, we're proud to be bringing small businesses the solutions and support they need to stay open. Because being open is a wonderful thing. See how we can help your small business at vancity.com slash open. We work with Van City because our values are so well aligned and we strive to be part of the community just like Van City does. Van City is first and foremost here to foster small businesses in their community and make a greater impact on the Vancouver community. You know, we're working hard to be sustainable and provide in the community at a high level just like Van City does. They have been cheerleaders to our business. They deliver on their promises and they're there for me when I need them. I really can feel like how closed and shut the city is just by how many things are boarded up. Like, are we ever gonna be able to take these boards down? Throw a fire on top of a pandemic, like how do you make it through that? You know, is that place ever gonna reopen? The Ellis Building is a steel manufacturing building that's been here since the turn of the century. Uh, we've converted it into a co-working space for small business owners and creatives. It's a hub for our community where we can hold creative workshops, see our clients, and distribute our goods and services. Due to COVID-19, the doors to the Ellis Building were shut. After we shut our doors, we were victims of arson, which added another layer of difficulty on top of the issues that we were already navigating around COVID. The neighborhood was starting to shut down and get boarded up and it just felt like a very dark and closed off space. Van City's support of this mural was was really a nice unexpected bonus and like something we knew we had to do but with no resources of our own having a bank step up and be like hey let us let us make this into something. As small business owners, it's important to us to work with a financial institution like Van City, whose community values align with our own. Having Paige come in and be able to put her touch on it was really amazing. It's like really brought some light and life back into something that really felt so negative for a while. Everybody here is incredibly creative and resilient, and we're on the mend and working to renovate and bring the space back to really better than it was when we started.
Hello everyone and welcome to Van City's 75th Annual General Meeting. I'm Jan O'Brien, I'm the Chair of the Board of Directors and it's my role this evening to chair our meeting. We are meeting for the second time virtually as we move through the second year of the COVID pandemic. Obviously it would have been much nicer to gather together in person as we've done in the past. Meetings virtually lose the warmth and connection we would normally have. But it also makes it easier for more of us to attend. Last year's AGM, our first virtual one, was attended by more than 600 members. That was our highest AGM attendance ever. So while we will miss the chance to connect with you in person, we're glad that so many of you can attend this meeting as we report on our results last year and where we plan to go this year. Tonight we're hosting our webcast from our headquarters at Van City Centre with a small number of staff who are assisting in facilitating this meeting and presenters from whom you will hear later on. We have a full presentation tonight with information on Van City's performance, activities and future plans. So please stay tuned in until the end as we need 100 members for this meeting to be duly convened. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to access tonight's AGM package located on the main page at www.vancity.com AGM. I now call this meeting to order. I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathering in the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil people and pay my respects to elders both past and present. We wish to express our gratitude to the Squamish First Nation whose territory we are gathering on today. Before we begin, I'd like to play a video from Chief Leanne Joe who kindly agreed to record a welcome blessing to those of us who've gathered here at Van City Center on Squamish territory. Good day. Welcome to Van City Credit Union's 2021 virtual AGM. My name is Shapela Matsyam, also known as Chief Leanne Joe. I am one of 16 hereditary chiefs of the Squamish Nation. I share my name with my late father, Shapalem Siam, also known as Chief Philip Joe. My mother is Gloria Wilson, and she is from the Kwakwakiwak speaking people on the east coast shores of Vancouver Island. I am also a descendant of the Tsiwatooth Nation. I'd like to welcome you to the unceded traditional territories of the Skoltmish, Tsiwatooth, and Musqueam Nations. Our ancestors have roamed this land since time immemorial where you live, work, and play. I just wanted to welcome you to our territories, to the AGM. I hope it is some great discussion today and that all things are healthy moving forward for all of us into a new future where our children are thriving. And I'm looking forward to the continued great work of Van City Credit Union um, in the days to come. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Leanne Joe, for recording this welcome blessing for us. It's important for us to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples on whose traditional territories we live and work. It's a critical sign of respect that recognizes their presence, both in the past and the present, and it's one small way that we can express our commitment to reconciliation. I now would like to introduce our board of directors. Two directors, Bill Chan and Lily Graywall, are here with us tonight. You will hear from them a little later. The rest of the directors have joined us virtually through our webcast. They are Anita Braha, our vice chair, Bill Chan, Joel DeYoung, Lily Graywall, Hel Selim, Patrick Nangle, Rita Parikh and Christy Stevenson. I'd also like to introduce our executive leadership team. Christine Bergeron, President and CEO, who is here with me. You will be hearing from her shortly. The rest of the team are joining us virtually tonight. Nez Aquino, Chief Risk Officer. Clayton Buckingham, Chief Financial Officer. Jonathan Fowley, 
Chief External Relations Officer, J.N. Guilfoy, CEO of the Van City Community Investment Bank, Paula Martin, Interim Chief Human Resources Officer, David Perry, Chief Members Service Officer, and Kirsten Sutton, Chief Technology and Information Officer. Van City has duly appointed Miranda Lamb as parliamentarian. She has joined us tonight in person. And a special welcome to our American Sign Language interpreters, Lily Flanjack. Okay, Miranda's gonna just come and join us in a few seconds. Thank you for joining us tonight, Miranda. Thank you, it's my pleasure, and I wish all the members a good and productive meeting. Okay, I was beginning <clears throat> to say that we have uh, two um, interpreters here tonight, and uh, one is Jillian Petty. I'm sorry, I don't see the other name, Lily Flanjack. And you'll see them at the bottom right of your screens during tonight's meetings. The notice of the AGM was sent before April 23, 2021, meeting the 18-day minimum notice requirement. The Van City rules state that a quorum for general meetings is 100 members. At this moment, we have over 200 members participating in our webcast tonight, so we have met quorum. I'd also like to extend a welcome to our special guests who are watching via the webcast tonight. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Now I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items for tonight's meeting. You can submit questions and comments at any point during tonight's meeting. To do this, please click on the highlighted icon shown in the presentation. We will do our best to address most questions during the question period. If we do not get to your question tonight, we will reach out in the days after the AGM. You will also use this function when you'd like to move or second a motion. I'll now go over the voting process for tonight's resolutions. Once I read out a resolution, I will ask that you type in the chat if you'd like to move or second a motion. Once it's time to vote, you will see the motion you are voting on with three buttons, for, against, and withheld. When you wish to vote in favor of a resolution, press for. If you are opposed to a resolution, press against. To close the count, we will need all members to respond. If you wish to abstain, as in not vote, press withheld. You will have 15 seconds to vote, and once the votes are tabulated, they will be displayed on the screen. Please be patient as we wait for the results to come in. Please ensure that you're watching this webcast live, as it will impact the time you have to vote. At the top left corner of the video, make sure it says live. If it says DVR, you are behind on the broadcast. If you are behind on the broadcast, just go to the bottom left corner and press Go to Live button. Now we will move on to the first motion of the night. You should have a copy of the agenda in your package posted online and we've also placed the agenda on the screen for your convenience. The first motion of the night is to approve the agenda. Please type in the chat if you'd like to move or second a motion. The question is, should the agenda be approved? Is there a motion that the agenda be approved with a closing time of 8 p.m.? Just takes a few minutes to get, a few moments to get an, someone to type in that they're moving or seconding. There's now a, it's now moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? We will give you a few seconds to type here.
There's no discussion, so we'll take move forward now to vote. Should the agenda be approved, please vote now. For, against, or withheld. People will tell you it's impossible, that things will never change. Well, to them we say, just watch. Because with every dollar you borrow, every cent you invest, every tap, every swipe, you join a movement. One that knows the climate crisis can be solved. That's proof sustainable is profitable. One that makes room for everyone and believes that when you use your money to do what's right, nothing can stop us. That's when you become a financial force for change. We're waiting for the results to come in. Remember, everyone needs to vote, so if you want to abstain, please vote withheld. I'm waiting for the results to come in from the vote. It's been moved, but I'm waiting for the vote to come in. Just, just hold on with us as, as we uh, deal with this technical issue. Results will be up soon. We're just dealing with a technical problem right at this moment, so please bear with us. Here we are. We had 98.25% vote in favor of approving the agenda with a closing time at 8 p.m. The motion is carried. The standing rules are part of your AGM package right after the agenda. Let me draw your attention to the following standing rules. Rule 2, members may submit a question or comment electronically. Such questions, if recognized by me, the chair, will be addressed at the meeting. Rule 5, members may submit questions or comments throughout the meeting. They will be addressed during the allotted question period. Please keep your questions, comments brief and to the point. Rule 6, a second question or comment on the same motion will be addressed if there is enough time left during the allotted question period. Rule 7, the AGM is for the purpose of transacting the business of the general membership of Vancouver City Savings Credit Union. Issues of a personal nation, nature will not be addressed during the meeting and may be referred to the appropriate employee. The standing rules require approval by a simple majority. Is there a motion that the proposed standing rules for the 75th AGM be approved? Please type in the chat if you'd like to move or second this motion. We're just waiting a few moments for someone to move or second the motion. Much easier when we're all in the room together and we can see people's arms up. We have uh, a mover, Daniel St Mel <laughs> keeps changing on me. Melanie Kurameng moved. Daniel Stern seconded. Thank you very much. It's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on this motion? Again, we'll give you a few seconds to type here. There, there's no discussion taking place online. So time to vote now. Should the standing rules for the 75th annual general meeting be approved? Please vote now.
It'll be a few moments until we get the vote. Zero. It would be easy to think that zero is the same as nothing. That it's just a number. Like 1986. Except that's the year we started Canada's first socially responsible investment fund. Or 1992, when we began disclosing our environmental footprint. Or 2008, the time we became the first North American-based financial institution to become carbon neutral. And 2016, when we launched our first fossil fuel-free fund. Which brings us to one more number, 2040. The year Van City aims to become net zero. Not just carbon neutral, but zero. It's just one of our climate commitments that says we're doing everything in our power to combat this crisis. And we'll be helping our members and our communities to take action and to adjust and adapt to our changing world. Because no one should be left behind. Everyone from every background deserves to be included in the response. It's time for all or nothing. Because zero is everything. We're, we're still waiting for the votes to come in. We now have close to 400 people in the meeting, so. 495.7. 95 the motion is passed. Okay, moving on now. The board approved the minutes of the 2020 meeting and a copy has also been included in the annual general meeting package. One of the traditions of our annual general meeting has been to recognize those of our members who have been with our credit union for 50 years or longer. With hundreds of us gathered in the same room, we always have several people who stand up to identify their long history with us. We don't want to abandon that tradition in the face of these strange times of virtual meetings and physical distancing rules. So we encourage anyone who has been a member since 1971 or earlier to send us a message. You can do so by clicking on the questions and comments icon at the top of your screen. I know we have many members who can proudly attest to a half century with Van City. I look forward to getting there myself one day. Before I present the Board of Directors report for 2020, I want to acknowledge how hard the past 14 months have been for many of us. The COVID pandemic is still ongoing and has affected so many in our community. On behalf of the Board, I want to express our condolences to members who may have lost loved ones during this time. We're all hopeful that the situation will get a lot better with vaccinations ramping up. Getting through the last 14 months required people working together and helping each other. And this is exactly what being a cooperative is all about. That's why when the pandemic began, we knew how to respond. Put people first, advance the common good, and help solve real problems facing people in our communities. Our response to the outbreak showed how a cooperative can mobilize its membership to help each other get through a major crisis together. Our members needed us more than ever and our employees rose to the challenge. It was inspiring to see and others saw this too. Many in the media reported about what we were doing and asked why others weren't taking similar action. We were highlighted as a great example of corporate citizenship by Corporate Knights. In 2020, we faced our first leadership transition since 2007. After leading Van City for 13 years, Tamara Vrooman has taken her dedication and commitment to the helm of Vancouver's Airport Authority. Tamara guided Van City through a period of growth and transformation. We are now an influential community-based credit union and a model for social and environmental innovation in the financial sector. The board conducted a comprehensive talent search for the new CEO that attracted many highly qualified candidates from across Canada. At the end of a thorough process, the board concluded that Van City already had the right person in-house. Christine Bergeron, previously our Chief Member Service Officer, 
and interim CEO brings the right experience, skills, and strategic vision to take Van City into the future. She has an impeccable understanding of banking, investment, member services, and what it means to be a financial cooperative. Christine is the right leader for this important moment in our credit union's history. For Van City, being a financial cooperative has always meant working to address inequities and remove barriers to economic well-being. It was disturbing for the board to watch how the pandemic was making existing inequality worse, in particular for women and especially for women of color. The evidence is clear that the COVID-19 recession has very much been what economists have termed a she-session. We now know that the hardest hit sectors are ones that have a lot of businesses owned by women. We know that many of the first jobs cut when the pandemic started were women's jobs, and women took on a lot more of the additional care requirements families faced during the pandemic. Gaps in pay and retirement savings got worse during the pandemic. Many women are at risk of leaving the workforce altogether, setting back decades of employment gains. This is a systemic challenge, and we must be part of the solution. I'm proud of the work Van City has been doing to fight this trend, such as our ongoing support of women entrepreneurs and advocacy on key issues such as public child care. Racism continues to plague our society. We've been witnessing an alarming rise in overt and often violent acts of racism in British Columbia and elsewhere. It is completely unacceptable. No one in our communities should be worried about racist taunts when they go for a walk or get on public transit. No one should have reason to think they'll get anything less than the best treatment possible when they go to hospital. People should never be made to fear being targeted by police when they're, they've done nothing wrong. Often racism isn't overt though. It's hidden in legacy structures we are all part of. Van City opposes racism and stands for diversity and inclusion. Last year, we recognized the need to do more and took an important decision to become an actively anti-racist financial institution. Our first step is a hard look at ourselves as a credit union to look at the systems and processes we have in place that may be barriers to people and we're committed to removing them. It's also important for us as Canadians to do our part in redressing the historic wrongs inflicted on Indigenous communities. That's why reconciliation is a core value for Van City. There's a lot we can continue to do to remove barriers and help the healing process by using the tools of banking and finance the right way. In November, Van City attended a very moving virtual community acknowledgement ceremony held by the Heltzik First Nation to recognize our partnership and support. We provided a grant to help Heltzik build a health specialist clinic so they can provide their members more health services in community. But we also modeled a way of working with Indigenous partners that is built on respect listening and tailoring solutions to needs. It was another instance where we showed how, through our cooperative values, we are a financial force for change. Our members' focus and cooperative principles also guide our response to the climate crisis. Van City's Board of Directors feel that this is the most pressing challenge facing all of us before and after COVID. The climate crisis is first and foremost a human crisis. It will affect all of us, our families and our communities. It will affect some of us more than others and some of us are better placed than others to cope with its impacts and make the changes necessary to be part of the climate transition. The reality today is that many of us cannot afford to live in an LED LEED certified home or live with in cycling distance of our workplace. And the reality also is that we're all in this emergency together. 
If only some of us are able to transition to a clean economy, the climate transition will have failed. But what can we do? Individual actions may feel like small steps given the magnitude of the crisis. As a cooperative, we all know that many small steps taken together can make a huge difference. We can do more, and whatever we can do matters. But this is also a systemic challenge, and the responsibility for solving it cannot fall strictly on the shoulders of individual people. It's up to governments and corporations to do the heavy lifting. Van City has a long record of working to address both environmental and equity issues. The ambitious climate commitments we developed throughout 2020, including our goals to make Van City net zero across all our lending by 2040, reflect our sense of urgency. But they also reflect our knowledge that any successful solution must put people first and leave no one behind. Our climate commitments will focus Van City's work to develop climate solutions for our members and to push for necessary systemic change. They will guide Van City in enabling our members and communities to join a climate transition that builds a world both clean and fair. I want to take this moment to thank my fellow board members. 2020 was a different year for conducting board business. In fact, with three new board members, we did not meet in person as a board even once in 2020. Thank you all for working so collaboratively and effectively throughout the year. I also want to thank the executive and employees of Van City for carrying on the essential work of our credit union during this lengthy COVID-19 pandemic. 2020 was a tough year for Canada's cooperative movement but we shone a bright light on what cooperatives can achieve and why they remain so vital in our communities. Coming together and acting on our cooperative values in the face of the challenges ahead, we will continue being a financial force for change. Before I turn this meeting over to Christine for her CEO report, I have a couple of final comments. I've been a Van City member for a long time and it has been one of my greatest joys to serve you all as a director and as chair of the board. With my time on the board ending, this is the last time that I will have the chance to report to you on Van City's achievements and goals and how we're living our shared values. I wish to thank all of you, our members, for this unique opportunity. It was especially my privilege to play a role in work on the climate crisis and reconciliation. The last 14 months have reaffirmed for me how vital and necessary our cooperative values are. Ours is a different model, one of profit with purpose and putting people and planet first. I wish all of you the best of health and every opportunity for success in the future. Thank you, Jen, and good evening. This is my ninth annual general meeting at Van City, and it's always been a privilege to be part of it. I feel particularly fortunate today to report to you for the first time as president and CEO on our credit union's results and performance over the last year. We're now in our 75th year as a member-owned cooperative. That's 75 years of being a financial force for change, using banking, finance, and our influence to make a difference for our members and the communities where you live and work. Guided by a focus on people, planet, and prosperity, we've always tried to solve real life problems, to remove financial barriers people face every day. It means that instead of just using a portion of our profits to support community, we put our entire business to work to improve people's lives. We make a profit to make an impact including on the financial well-being of people and communities historically left behind. This is what we've always been about. But 2020 tested us like no other year. And I'm very proud of how the Van City team rose to the challenge. When the pandemic arrived suddenly upon our communities, we were all caught a little bit off guard. Many people saw the impact and what was happening, but the situation had no precedent in the globalized modern world. 
In that moment of community crisis, Van City's values gave us the clarity and direction for what we needed to do. We immediately supported our members facing financial difficulty, making sure you had the resources and safety net to weather the immediate storm. We waived our transaction fees. We put more staff resources toward our online and telephone banking services. We offered loan and mortgage payment deferrals without penalty. We helped members receive government support quickly. And we were the only North American financial institution to reduce credit card rates to zero. We also focused on shoring up the community around us when it needed help the most. While other institutions in the downtown east side shut their doors to our most vulnerable neighborhood, we not only kept the doors of Pigeon Park Savings open, we also worked with the city, the province, and the local community to put more resources towards ensuring that the health crisis already unfolding in that community wasn't made worse in the pandemic. We helped to establish a multi-million dollar response fund that supported the nonprofit sector in our communities. We found ways to help small businesses get through the impact of health restrictions or pivot their business model to helping fight the pandemic. We had a specific focus on supporting women entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses, many of which were hit particularly hard during the pandemic. And we worked to be at the table when the federal and provincial governments were deciding how to respond. We shared with them what you were telling us about your challenges and the supports you needed. We know they found this input valuable because they told us and because they acted on it. You'll notice that I have said we quite frequently in describing our response to the pandemic. The we I'm referencing is the Van City team. Each and every employee in this organization helped us help you. The Van City team is one that brings compassion to their work and one that is super dedicated to bettering our community. For them, many of whom are listening in to this AGM. I'm very thankful. Since we rolled out our COVID response, it has been very gratifying to read the notes that many of you sent us to say thank you. We grew by almost 7,000 members last year, a growth rate of 1.3%. All of this tells me that what we did was right, the right thing in how we met the crisis of the pandemic. Not everything is where we'd like it to be though. Waiting out line, in line, excuse me, outside our branches and longer wait times for our telephone banking services are very frustrating for our members. I know that. Public health guidelines meant we had to close our call centers and move almost half of our employees, close to 1,500 people, home to work remotely. We also had to quickly adjust to how we continued serving you in branches while ensuring the safety of our employees. And we had to do this very quickly without disrupting services. We had to adopt new technologies and systems and equipment to make this possible. And we had to move and train people from branches to meet increased demand on the phone. Our call volumes doubled when the pandemic started and were more than 50% higher year over year in 2020. Our calls are also 20% longer than before the pandemic as we respond to more complex needs. We know financial institutions across North America are experiencing the same challenge, but I can assure you we are very focused on reducing our wait times. And I want you to know we're working to put systems and people in place to meet the changing and very different needs among our diverse membership. Our own financial performance in 2020 was also affected by the pandemic and our response to it. The first quarter was one of our strongest in recent years. And both the fourth quarter of 2020 and the first quarter of 2021 have been strong in many respects too. But we did face higher costs in 2020. We also set aside unprecedented provisions for credit losses. And we saw our revenues compressed by lower margins and the impact of our support programs. As a result, we finished 2020 with a net income of $46.3 million, a 31.7% decrease from 2019. Putting a deliberate focus on supporting members through the pandemic also meant we generated less overall financial returns for members at year end. We measure this using ROAM, or Return on Average Members Equity. Our 2020 ROAM was 4.3% against a target of 5.9%. Despite the reduction in ROAM, we continued to give back 30% of our net income to members and communities, as we do every year. 
After taking this distribution into account, our 2020 ROAM was 3.2% against a target of 4.8%. At the same time, our underlying financials remain very strong and our trajectory is very positive. 2020 started with significant growth. Our performance was down in the second and third quarter because of the pandemic and the supports we deliberately chose to provide to members. But the steps we took to address this drop in performance meant our fourth quarter was very strong and this strength carried over to the first quarter of 2021. On some performance metrics, we are stronger now than before the pandemic. We saw continued growth in our balance sheet in 2020. We finished the year with total assets and assets under administration of $30.5 billion. We also put in place a strategy to reduce costs in some areas of the organization, accelerate growth, and strengthen our profitability in order to ensure we would continue to maximize our impact. Between these actions and our strong year and balance sheet position, I'm confident about our financial performance in the coming years. Our community impact grew as well in 2020. We track this by looking at our triple bottom line assets and assets under administration. The acronym is TBLA. These are the activities we supported with assets or financing that contribute to at least one dimension of social or environmental well-being. Our goal is to increase the percentage of Van City assets that qualify and that therefore bring a positive benefit to community. In 2020, our TBLA grew to 29.1% from 27.6% the previous year. That's $8.9 billion at the end of 2020. I also want to say that we know how hard our employees are working to take care of you under very difficult circumstances for everyone. Many of you have written to comment on the high quality of service you received. We have incredible people here at Van City and making sure they can continue serving you in a manner that is safe for everyone was another key priority for us during COVID. I'm sure many of you saw the measures we put in place at branches such as physical distancing and plexiglass and the requests to wear face masks. And we are making sure all of our employees are able to get vaccinated when they're eligible to do so. From the very beginning, we looked for ways to support our employees from innovative scheduling to mental health services and support. It was heartening to see that in such a challenging year, our employee engagement score was 69%, an increase of seven percentage points over 2019. In a year with so much extra strain for everyone, it was particularly painful that people in our communities also had to deal with instances of racism. Racism of any kind, whether overt or subtle, intentional or not, is unacceptable in our communities. Sadly, in 2020, we all saw evidence of the work we need to do. Racism won't be eradicated until we all take responsibility to challenge it. Van City has always valued diversity and inclusion and worked to remove the barriers and legacies that systemic racism creates, but we know that we need to do more. That's why we committed in 2020 to become a proactively anti-racist organization. This means challenging racism in all its forms, finding our own processes or cultures that might perpetuate biases and create barriers and then correcting them, making our stance on zero tolerance explicit and public, and continuing to work at being an ally to communities with lived experience. This ongoing work is a key priority for 2021 and I look forward to reporting on our progress next year. I'm also proud of our continued work with Indigenous communities and Indigenous-owned business to build economic resilience and strength. Reconciliation is a core value for Van City, and our work with the health sick that Jan, Jan mentioned is but one example. We are exploring how we can expand the ways we serve Indigenous communities, how we can create a more welcoming and inclusive experience for Indigenous members, and how we can recruit and promote more Indigenous employees. The reality is that major crises tend to make existing inequalities worse. We saw that with COVID, but we're also seeing that happening with the climate crisis. Climate change, at the end of the day, is a people issue. It is about the effects that changing climate will have and is having on individuals and communities of people. 
And so, as Jan already said, you really can't successfully respond to the climate crisis if you don't embed your thinking to include people and the inherent inequality that underlies our systems. Van City has a long track record of action on both climate change and inequality. We had been hard at work on this before the pandemic and continued to focus on it in 2020. The result is five climate commitments we announced this January. What drives our commitments is a principle that it should be possible for any one of you to be part of the transition to a clean and fair economy. If you want to do more to reduce your emissions or live more sustainably, we want to help. As Jan said, climate change and inequality are both systemic challenges. Individual actions can help the fight and add up to have real impact, but they're not enough. We're committed to advocating for wider changes that will move the transition along faster and we'll be doing our part. We're still in the process of mapping out the details of how we'll achieve this, and we'll be transparent about our plans once we have them mapped out. But we already know the broad outline. We've committed to reduce our own lending portfolio to net zero by 2040. That will mean working with governments and industry to make reducing emissions from buildings and homes something that all of you can do. We know that we'll offer products that make the climate transition more affordable to you and your families, our PlanetWise products are early examples. Our commitment to a climate transition for everyone will also inform the community projects and impact businesses we support. It will be reflected in our public reporting and in our work with the international banking partners and the United Nations. We'll continue to find ways to test and model solutions that others can also implement, just as we did when we became carbon neutral in our operations over a decade ago. We will also continue our market-leading work in the area of socially responsible investments. That's why we've committed to offering only responsible investment options that can demonstrate the integrity of their environmental, social, and corporate governance screening and stewardship process. In a year with a lot of market volatility, SRI performed very strongly, including the portfolios we manage and offer members. Even with all that happened in 2020, we continued to support important community initiatives. Over the year, we approved grants for 247 not-for-profits and impact businesses totaling $4.6 million. Over 3,000 units of affordable housing were constructed or renovated in 2020 with financing from Van City. Financial literacy continues to be a priority, even though health restrictions meant we assisted less people directly. We launched an online resource and a podcast to provide financial advice during the pandemic. We're updating our financial literacy curriculum to incorporate Indigenous teachings and worldviews. And we're putting more resources towards the investment and financial planning advice we're providing you. Supporting the cooperative economy is another important issue for us. In 2020, we helped organize a peer-to-peer -peer forum of co-op representatives to share challenges and opportunities stemming from the pandemic. And we continued helping communities and workers create cooperatives. We also recertified as a living wage employer in 2020. The living wage in Metro Vancouver actually went down to $19.50 last year, but we continued to use the 2018 rate of $20.91 in adjusting what we pay our employees. And we continue to work closely with key suppliers to have their employees who provide direct services to Van City pay a living wage as well. A major part of our impact is keeping money circulating in the communities where it is generated. Our balance sheet reflects this through the percentage of our loans that is funded by members' deposits. In recent years, this percentage was around 85, but in 2020, it jumped to over 95%. That's good news for us, but it also reflects the fact that people did not spend as much money in the economy in 2020. Of course, in a year with so much uncertainty and so many health restrictions, many of us spent a lot less. These health restrictions, combined with people spending less, hit many of our local small businesses really hard. The most impacted include the local small shops, restaurants and salons, all those businesses that make your neighborhood unique and different from the rest of the city. Helping keep the local economy strong through this tough time is another way for us to make an impact in our communities. Our pandemic partnership with Support Local BC recently reached a milestone, 
Over a million dollars in gift certificates have been purchased from over 1,700 business and more than 100 communities in BC. We are working to find other ways to continue helping businesses in our communities. This has been a tough period for all of us, but we are pulling through it together as a community. The capital members have built up, enabled members to help other members through a difficult time. This is exactly what a cooperative should do when the community needs support. Looking forward, I'm optimistic that we can face the challenges ahead in a similar way. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. So we now have 15 minutes for questions relating to the board and the CEO reports. I understand there's some questions that have been submitted, but please submit your questions now through the chat and we'll do our very best to get through them. But if we don't, please stay tuned in. There will be another question period later this evening. Okay, the first question is, why was the location of Pigeon Park savings moved? Christine, do you have the details on that? I know the general outline, but. Uh, there were various reasons for why Pigeon Park uh, moved. Um, what we can say is that, you know, we have moved it. It's now in um, a, a seismically um, upgraded building, and so we're happy with the location. The next question is, how was Van City, how has Van City been affected by the pandemic so far, and what does this mean for members? Christine? Sure, thanks for the question. Um, I think we tried to outline how the pandemic affected us uh, financially in 2020 um, and how we responded for members during that time. So I think um, most of that was covered in the presentation, but certainly we did look to provide um, changes in fee structure. We offered a new and innovative products. Um, and overall, uh, we are now uh, strong financially uh, looking forward to this year. Okay, the next question is, why is there such little racial diversity in the executive leadership. This really seems like a weakness to say the least. Where is the spirit of reconciliation or does that only narrowly extend to land acknowledgements? So thank you very much for your question. That's an important issue that you've raised and one that Van City is very concerned about. So at this time in our leadership, we have 57% women and 25% black and people of color and 1% indigenous people. We know that we need racial diversity across the entire organization and particularly at the leadership level. So what we've done is we've made a commitment that by the end of 2025, we're aiming to have the senior leadership team with at least 40% who, who identify as indigenous, black, people of color, LGBTQ, to us and people living with a disability. We recognize that this is a, a gap and something that we need to work on. Our next question is, cyber attacks are getting more prevalent. What steps are being taken to prevent or minimize the impact of an attack? Over to you, Christine. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Yes, uh, we do know that, especially um, over the last year and during the pandemic, there's been uh, increased uh, fraud and cyber attacks occurring. We take this very seriously and the teams um, are constantly being proactive to ensure that we have a stable and secure system. Um, for perhaps obvious reasons, I can't get into sp the specifics of the work, but please know that it's uh, of extreme importance to us and we are proactive with that. Okay, we have five minutes left for this question period. We have a question. Why did Van City abandon Point Grey and Dunbar communities and businesses in 2020? They were abandoned simultaneously in 2020, leaving a large area on the west side of Vancouver unserviced. Van City has betrayed its purported values of community service, support of local business, and differentiation from traditional financial institutions. This is from a disillusioned uh, member. Christine? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your question. Um, and I understand um, 
perhaps how you may be feeling. So we did uh, do a review of all of our branches last year. It's something that we started several years ago, and it's really based on looking at membership and overall behavior of members. So our intent is not actually to drop the, uh, our footprint and the number of branches that we have, but it is to uh, move and focus on the growth that we are seeing. What, we, uh, can, what I can say is that we actually just yesterday announced that we are opening a branch up at UBC and that will happen next week. So we are continuously looking at new locations and we do expect to continue to open new locations in the coming years. Okay, our next question is, are you able to provide insight to why Van City continues to invest in Amazon? Christine, do you have an answer for that? Well, what I can say, uh, thank you for the question. What I can say is that Van City uh, does not directly invest or lend to any fossil fuel companies. And then uh, we don't, uh, obviously don't lend to Amazon. They certainly don't need our money. Um, and um, our investments are done through um, either mutual funds that our members um, can purchase um, or individual stocks and bonds that members would then choose. So they would be asking our advisors to make those investments. Uh, Van City Investment Management does uh, invest in a variety of companies. I'm, I'm not familiar with the exact list, but what I can say is that any of the investments that are made are done with very clear screenings around environmental, social, and corporate governance matters. Um, and so we can perhaps provide additional information after the AGM if you are interested. Okay, the last question for this session of question period is, does Van City have international partner banks, credit unions that we can collaborate with? I feel that there's so much value in what you have developed that other organizations can adopt. Well, as a matter of fact, we're a member of the Global Alliance for Banking on Values. This is an organization of like-minded um, credit unions, banks, with different perspectives, but uh, with the same concern for values in banking, and uh, we've been part of that organization for um, oh, more than 10 years, right, Christine? Mm -hmm. And we've uh, shared uh, a lot of different ideas with them. They have different uh, streams, streams for gov people like me from the governance side of, um, of the organization as well as other areas that are important to our members, so we are doing that. Okay, it's now time for the Van City Audit Committee Chair, Bill Chan, to present the Auditor's Report and Sustainability Assurance Providers Report on behalf of KPMG. Thank you, Jan. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. KPMG LLP was appointed as the external auditor of the credit union for the year ended December 31st, 2020. KP KPMG was engaged by the credit union to perform an audit of the annual consolidated financial statements of Van City for the year ended December 31st, 2020, which is a regulatory requirement for all credit unions in British Columbia and to provide assurance over key accountability data, information, and principles included in the 2020 annual report. The assurance provided over Van City's accountability report is not a legal or regulatory requirement, but one of that ma management and the board have voluntarily sought to obtain as leading best practice here in Canada and globally. One firm, KPMG, provides assurance over both the financial statements and key accountability information and principles in the annual report. This external assurance provides confidence that key information is complete, accurate, and balanced. It also drives improvements and the integration in, in credit unions management and reporting practices. KPMG's independent auditors report over the 2020 consolidated financial statements is included in the 2020 annual report on page 48. KPMG's independent assurance report over Van City's accountability reporting is included in the 2020 annual report on page 31 to 32. There are no concerns to discuss with you with respect to the reports provided by KPMG. The Audit Committee has reviewed the work performed by KPMG and confirms that KPMG has remained independent from Van City in the context of rules established 
under professional standards, received the full cooperation of management and employees of Van City in conducting their audits, being provided with full access to Van City's books and records during their audits, and being able to carry out their audit procedures without any restrictions or limitations. I move that the Auditor's Report and Sustainability Assurance Providers Report for the year ended December 31st, 2020 be adopted. Okay, please type in the chat if you'd like to second this motion. Just giving people a few moments to do that. Yes, we have a seconder. Is there any discussion? I'll wait a few moments for any of you who are typing. No discussion so far. No discussion taking place. We'll move on. The question is, should the auditor's report and the sustainability assurance providers report for the year ended December 31st 2020 be adopted. Please vote now. Uh, 400 uh, people online so it's taking a few minutes to get the votes in Okay, the vote has come in for 92.6. Okay. Okay, so we have 92.65% uh, for the motion, so it's passed. We have 92.65% for the motion, so the motion is passed. I move that KPMG LLP be appointed Auditor and Sustainability Assurance Provider for Van City for 2021 and that the Board of Directors be authorized to set the remuneration for KPMG in this capacity. Once again, please type in the chat if you'd like to second this motion. Just waiting for a seconder. We have seconders, so we can go ahead with the um, vote. Oh, sorry, I should just find out if there's any discussion.
taking place on this resolution. Just a few minutes and moments and we'll see. Okay, we can go ahead with the motion. The question is, should KPMG be appointed auditor and sustainability assurance provider for Van City for 2020 with the board of directors authorized to set the remuneration for KPMG? Okay, please vote now. For, against, or withheld. Okay, still waiting for the votes to come in. Okay. <laughs> okay, the votes are in. 85.45% in favor. The motion is carried. Thank you, Bill. We will now hear from Lily Graywall, Chair of the Nomination and Elections Committee. Thank you, Jen. Good evening, members. The members of the Nominations and Elections Committee for 2020 are the following non-director members, Kevin Huang, Mira Oric, Paula Shaw, and Costanza Testino. And the director members are Jan O'Brien and myself as chair. And hello to my fellow nominations and committee members who have joined us tonight via the webcast, and thank you so much for all of your efforts this year. We had 12 candidates run for four positions on the board, and we had 32,968 valid ballots cast this year in total for both mail and online. For a second year in a row, this is a record turnout, so thank you to all of our voting members. Three of our candidates elected as directors will be serving a three-year term, with the fourth serving a one-year term, commencing at the close of this AGM. The following three directors will be serving a three-year term. Megan Giltrow with 22,509 votes. Bill Chan with 17,545 votes. Javaria Velkamp with 15,116 votes and the fourth director elected to serve the final year of Nikki Sharma's term is Patrick Nangle, 14,120 votes. Congratulations to you all. On behalf of all Van City members, thank you to all of the candidates who ran in this year's Board of Director elections. Without members like you, we would not be able to be the strong and democratic cooperative that we are. You are all great examples of our passionate and engaged membership. And I would like to recognize each one of you. Megan, Bill, Javaria, Patrick, Hel Salem, Derek de Blasio, Mercedes Wong, Mumpreet Graywall, Rowena Lang, Paula Plater, James Latinen, and Ron Thaler. I would also like to extend my deep gratitude to our exiting board member, Hill Salem, who was elected in 2020 for, to serve a one-year term. He served as vice chair of the Risk Committee and was a member of the Technology and Human Resources Committee. Hill Salem, your experience and expertise in governance and social justice issues has been invaluable to the discussions around the board table. Thank you so much for your service and we wish you all the best. And before I go, I would like to also take a few moments to honor our outgoing chair, Jan O'Brien, who's reached the end of her term with us. Van City has had the privilege and benefit of Jan's leadership on the board over the past 12 years. She's served in many capacities during her time with the organization, most notably as chair for five years. 
You see the slide in front of you that outlines some of the important work that Van City has undertaken during Jan's time with us over the past decade, some that were directly influenced by her leadership on the board. Things like the adaptation of Van City as the largest living wage employer in the country, the development of our fair and fast loan in response to predatory, predatory payday lenders, and our work with Reconciliation Canada. Over the years, Jan has played a leadership role in the credit union and financial services sector, having served on the board of Credit Central One, Van City Community Investment Bank, chair of the Peer Group Five, and representing Van City at the Canadian National or Canadian Credit Union Association and the Global Alliance for Banking on Values. Jan, I would also personally like to acknowledge how much I've appreciated your steady and consistent leadership over the years. During the past seven years, we've worked together on the board. I've learned so much from you, including watching how you diligently and consistently work to translate your deep commitment to social justice, labor rights, and equality into tangible decision-making at the board table, and doing so in a way that brought others along with you. I will miss your wise counsel, your calm approach, and your deep knowledge of our cooperative and our credit union sector. Thank you again for your dedication to Van City, and we are better because of it. Thank you very much, Lily. That was very kind of you. Okay, back to business. We will now proceed to the question period. We have 15 minutes for questions, including new business. I have a question, um, but I just want to remind you that you can uh, submit your questions through the chat right now. And if we don't get to your question, we'll get back to you in the days following the meeting. So the first question I have is, um, will all the members of the new board of directors promise to publish their official email addresses at the vancity.com website? Well, we do publish the board's email address on our website. It's board underscore directors at vancity.com. And as chair of the board, I review all the emails sent to that address, as well as the responses that are sent to our members. The whole board receives weekly updates and a formal quarterly report on all concerns that are sent directly to the board. So it's board underscore directors at vancity.com. Here's the, the next question. Does Van City intend to provide any startup financing for new home-based businesses to be started by women who are receiving CERB or CRB or enhanced EI during the pandemic? Christine. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Uh, so it depends what you mean by startup financing. So I can say a few things. So we will not be providing uh, equity in the form of startup financing uh, to businesses in the short term. But what we do offer um, is a variety of different programs uh, for women um, business owners. So we have partnered with the Women's Enterprise Center that provides us significant resources, both through mentorship as well as business planning and the like. Um, we have two different products that are offered, one's through a line of credit and one's a term loan, and both, um, I think, provide very flexible terms, and, and we'd certainly be interested in speaking to you about that, so you can certainly contact our team or we can reach back out after. Okay, here's our next question about investing. Why does Van City offer IA Clarington's SRI fund? These funds hold different banks in Canada, such as TD, that are amongst the biggest fin financiers of fossil fuel companies, according to Rainforest Action Network's annual report. Christine. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. So um, I would start by saying that we actually don't uh, only offer uh, the IA Clarington SRI funds. We actually sub-advise to those funds. So our team does the environmental, social, and corporate governance screening. We also offer the fossil fuel free funds through IA Clarington. Um, we've offered those funds for some years now, and we don't invest uh, directly in the fossil fuel uh, companies or industry. But we do have, uh, in those portfolios, as you point out, investments in the banks. We do that um, because, as a large institutional investor, we feel that we can affect change uh, through proxy voting, and our team has successfully uh, demonstrated that that uh, can occur, both uh, on several fronts, whether that's 
um, pay equity. We've we've worked very hard um, on ensuring uh, labor rights um, and quite a few other pieces, including environmental change. So we feel it's the best way to engage, uh, but we certainly don't uh, invest directly into fossil fuel companies. Okay, here's our next question. It's uh, from a member who's been listening to the meeting. You've kept your Pigeon Park branch open. She realizes this is a shared responsibility with the Portland Hotel Society, but it should not be news to Van City that many Marple residents share a lot in common with the residents of the downtown east side, i.e. existing on social assistance, disability, or seniors with only their meager OAS. Please reopen the Marple branch. Your services are much needed here. Can you tell us what the plans are for the Marple branch, Christine? Absolutely. Thank you. So, uh, so yes, uh, we will be reopening the Marple branch uh, next month. You know, again, um, as we were responding to the pandemic, we did need to ensure staffing levels and keeping employees safe. Um, it's one of the reasons why it's taken us longer, um, but Marple branch will be reopening. Okay, I think this brings us to the end of our question period. I don't see any new questions up on the board. So thank, oh, just hang tight, I'm told. There must be something coming. Here it is. When is Van City going to revamp the digital services option? Well, Van City has done lots in community and values. The digital offering of Van City are pretty abysmal. Our mobile app is no longer competitive and have greatly fallen behind in the use and innovation when compared to other financial institutions. And many members still don't have the access to in industry standard payment options like Visa mobile payments. The pandemic has greatly shown how much Van City has been lacking with digital services and upgrades need to be expedited. And our member points out this issue was brought up at last year's AGM. Christine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so we do uh, spend significant amount of time uh, constantly looking at what digital services are available um, at other financial institutions and understanding what we can bring forward and when. So it's absolutely a priority for us to ensure that we uh, improve our digital experience for members while we also ensure a stable and secure um, overall environment. So it is a priority, and we are working on some new pieces. We do have Apple Pay, um, but we're working on the others. Okay, and here's another question. Vancouver Island is a growing community. When will there be a branch opened in the Cowichan Valley or Duncan? Any plans there, Christine? Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, Karen. I hope you're enjoying the island. Uh, we, uh, we are continuing to look at other locations. I don't have any specific date or, or plans uh, you know, specific to Duncan or that area, but we are looking on the island um, as well as other locations in the Lower Mainland, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, I'm gonna ask. Oh, we have another question. This is great. I'd like to see ordinary people on the board rather than just professional board servers, CPAs, et cetera. Isn't the board recommending candidates a little self-serving in that incumbents tend to be recommended without fail? I'd like to see more young people, workers, students, and others serving on the board. What are you doing to encourage such candidates? We have a nomination and elections uh, committee, which the, you just saw the chair a little bit ago who work very hard to try to uh, bring in a diverse range of, um, of candidates. We, our, our opening requirement is that everyone be a values aligned with Van City and uh, support cooperative values in particular. So there are very, very ordinary people on the board, but they also happen to have skills that are important for a large organization like Van City, which is now has 30 billion in assets. So it's important that some of the board members be CPAs and have experience in um, large, um, uh, large uh, companies before they come to Van City. And we do search out young people, students and others to serve on the board. So thank you very much for bringing up this point. It's something that we continue to work hard on. So the, last, the next question is, my dream is to have a BC-based and BC-owned self, 
directed investing brokerage. I didn't find any. Millennials are increasingly investing on their own. Will Van City ever consider building brokerage that doesn't have monthly fees? I will be the first to use it. Do you mm -hmm. have a response, Christine? Sure. Thank you. Um, it's a good dream. So what I would say is that um, we partner um, through Aviso Wealth. So Aviso is our brokerage and also uh, the company that offers um, our, our trading platform uh, in the form of Qtrade. So we have virtual wealth for RoboAdvisor. We have Qtrade um, where you can uh, go and do your own trading. And then we also um, offer mutual funds and have our discretionary management. So um, on the one hand, we do have self-directed um, through Qtrade. So it's part of the credit union system more broadly, um, but that would be separate from building it ourselves. Okay, I'm waiting to see if there's any more questions. Oh, I do see a question here. What happened with Mountain Equipment Co-op this past year was devastating for many of the members in the cooperative movement in BC and Canada. How is Van City ensuring membership engagement and accountability beyond AGM and board elect elections? And also, how is Van City affirming its commitment to the cooperative principles and values? Well, we've had quite a few reports here today about the things that we're doing that support cooperative values. We've, we've, um, we're doing a lot around different uh, systemic issues that face our community, such as um, racism, reconciliation, supporting women, business owners. We, we are very um, committed to the cooperative principles and values at, at the board and throughout the, the, whole, uh, the whole credit union. Do you want to add anything to this uh, about how we're reaching our members, uh, Christine? Sure. So we also uh, support the BC Co-op Association and a variety of other co-ops through um, the work in, that our community investment team uh, does. Uh, we also spend a significant amount of time uh, looking at how we can help uh, finance and bank uh, the cooperatives. But I would say also that we do have um, a fairly recent role that's really focused actually on member and stakeholder engagement more broadly. So we are looking at how we can come back out and engage with members on different topics, and, and I hope that you'll see some of that uh, in the future. I think there's one last question, but I don't see it yet. Just waiting for the question to come up. I've really appreciated the questions tonight. They're very insightful and, and uh, show that we have a very engaged member, membership. So thank you to all of you. I don't see the question. They're refreshing the page for me so I can see the question. Oh, it was the last question was the one that we just dealt with. <laughs> just a bit of a technical glitch there. So the question period has now ended. So I, as I said, I think the questions were all really great tonight, and I really appreciate that we had more than 400 people on board to um, participate in this meeting. So thank you very much for your questions and comments. If you didn't get your answer, your question answered during the meeting, we will follow up in the days after. And we also welcome feedback, so feel free to send us email at agm at vancity.com. And as I said earlier, you can uh, send it to board underscore directors at vancity as well, vancity.com, that is. I'd like at this point to take a minute to thank all of our staff that made this virtual meeting possible. Vancity's governance team, the communications team, marketing team, and our information technology solutions team have all put in a lot of time and effort in ensuring we can connect with all of you virtually tonight. Also, thank you to our ASL interpreters, Lily Flanjack and Jillian Petit, audiovisual team Encore, and our voting platform partner, Lumi, for your technical support in ensuring tonight's webcast ran smoothly. This completes the business aspect of the AGM. 
As you know, we're giving our members a chance to win one of two $500 Visa gift cards for taking the time to join us tonight. We will contact you directly if you are a winner and provide you with the details on how you can collect your prize. Before we conclude, we'd like to fulfill the promise of our support local BC teaser that you saw up here during voting. As you've heard tonight, initiated in response to the pandemic, Van City partnered with Support Local BC to scale what was a single community idea in Victoria into a province-wide initiative connecting more than 15,000 customers with 1,800 businesses in 109 communities. I hope you got all that. Over $1 million have been put directly into the hands of local business owners across BC, including over 350,000 in gift certificates purchased from Van City member businesses. You can go to the supportlocalbc.com and the first 100 people to use the promo code VANCITYAGM will get $10 towards a purchase from a Van City member business listed on the site. Any Van City member business is easily identified through its proud Van City member badge and the code will only work if you have one of these businesses in your cart. The code will be live starting 8 p.m. tonight until 11.59 p.m. on May 18th or until all 100 codes have been redeemed. Thank you to everyone who joined us tonight and stayed with us throughout the meeting. Without you, this meeting wouldn't have been possible. I hope you and your families are staying healthy, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.